Hey everyone, it's Tim Holtz and I'm here at scrapbook.com and I'm excited to share with you some tips and tricks on using distressed crayons. Now, what are distressed crayons? They are a water reactive pigment in a stick that allows you to color, smudge, uh, scribble, watercolor, so many different things. So the crayons themselves, you can see, are really just a very simple tool. It has a removable cap and the medium in there is pretty dense. It, we describe it as a crayon, but it has a creamy texture, almost like a lipstick. Now, the medium itself can be extended simply by twisting the base. You can see you can get more color that comes up, or you can twist it the opposite direction to kind of retract it in there. Now, the overall appearance of distressed crayons really depend on how you apply them. They can be used on a variety of surfaces from paper to wood to fabric to chipboard. You can simply color them directly on by scribbling them and you get that great kind of crayon look. Or you can color those and smudge those out with your finger to kind of soften the edges or we can watercolor with those. Now, in addition to all of the distress colors available in crayons, these come in either sets or you can buy your individual favorite colors. You can also get metallic distress crayons. Those are our newest and those are really unique because as you can see, look at that, they have a great metallic shimmer and you can use these by themselves or in conjunction with the other colors of distress crayons. And they have those same properties as far as scribbling, smudging and watercolor. So let's put those to the test and kind of see how they work and what different surfaces we can work on. So here I'm just going to take some papers. Now when it comes to doing papers, we can do watercolor, we can do cards, we can do black cardstock, craft cardstock, really anything you want. But again, your surfaces really depend on what effect you want to achieve. Now, if you want to simply color or scribble, we can work just on a regular surface. I'm just going to extend some of the crayon, scribble that out. And so if you're just kind of doing doodling or drawing or sketching or doing lines, you can do that. But distress crayons have a unique smudge factor, meaning that you can go in with your finger after you apply them and actually smudge those out. But unlike other products like a gelato or an oil pastel, these dry. So you wanna make sure that if you are going to smudge them, you need to work quickly because if you wait too long for it to dry, it's not going to smudge as much, right? So if that's the case, you can simply apply more of that medium and move that out. So that's the cool trick when it comes to working with crayons. And to clean them off, well, they clean really easy. You can just take a baby wipe or a paper towel and it comes right off of your finger. So it doesn't stain the way ink or paint does. It's a really user-friendly medium. So let's talk about kind of putting it on different surfaces. Because this is a pigment, I can use that not only on a light surface, but also on something dark like craft or other colored cardstocks. So that's a cool thing about a pigment medium is it doesn't really matter what color your base surface is when you're working. Same thing, I can go in and smudge that and do all of those different uh, kind of effects to it. So let's watercolor with these. I'm just going to take a bold color, like a purple, and I'm just going to scribble that onto watercolor cardstock. And you can see this goes on really intense because after all, it is pigment. I'm just going to take a water brush or a paintbrush with water and these are reactive with water. So you can see as soon as water hits that, it really gives me the ability to blend out my color, but it's rich, intense color when it comes to working with the crayon. So I love the fact that I can scribble with them, smudge them, or watercolor with them. Now another cool thing, of course, working with the crayons just on a dry surface is let's say you have a piece of embossed cardstock. You run it through an embossing folder. The metallic crayons are so cool on that because you can apply those and blend those out to get this great kind of raised highlight metallic effect, whether it's over a solid color cardstock or over anything that you've already inked. Because these crayons are a pigment, you can apply these over distressed backgrounds, whether you're using inks or oxides, and you can still kind of highlight. You can see on the paper, this half has the metallic crayon, this doesn't have anything yet. So let's see how we apply those to the surface. Same thing, just gonna go in and kind of scribble those on. Now, if I'm really heavy handed like this section and I go in and smudge it, you can see that I can actually colorize the entire surface with a crayon. Now, if you don't like that look, we can go in and just kind of lightly apply just a little bit of crayon. Remember, it's gonna have that smudge factor. So I can go in and just with my finger, just gently smudge that to highlight just that textured area. So you as the artist get to totally control how much color you apply to the surface, whether you apply it heavy and smudge or light and smudge. If you want an even lighter effect, try taking the crayon and simply coloring it directly on your finger. This is a great way that you can go in and you can accent just areas and get a much lighter effect, whether you're working with the metallics or just the regular colors of distressed crayons. Pretty easy way to accent and blend. Now let's really kind of mix everything together and put those to the test on a mixed media application. I love mixed media, it's just really a cool way. So what I've done is just taken a piece of paper. It could be anything, it could be a regular tag, it could be a canvas, burlap panel, 
anything that you want. I've gone in and just collaged some ephemera. Now, collage meaning you're just going to take, whether they're photographs or little snippets of ephemera or your favorite pieces of decorative paper, and you're going to glue it down with a gel medium or a collage medium, something that's going to adhere that, but also has a layer over the top. So I brushed on the collage medium, adhered the photos or ephemera, and then a top layer of collage medium. So now we have a sealed surface, and that is a game changer when it comes to crayons. Because unlike working on those dry papers that I started with, the fact that this is sealed means that I have the unlimited palette time to add colors, smudge colors, remove colors, and here's how that works. I'm just going to go in and take some of the crayons, and I'm just going to scroll them out. Now one of my favorite things about working with Distress Crayons is I don't have to be too concerned about putting the lids on right away. Distress Crayons will not dry up. So I'm just going to leave those caps on. I can easily match them later because of course the color matches the base of that. I'm just going to work in a section just with a few different colors. Now depending on how you like to work with your crayons, you can either uh, leave them on the table. I prefer to kind of throw them all in a crayon storage tin. It's a great way that allows me to dig through my colors, kind of channeling my childhood days. But it's a really great way that we can get, now go in and we have those crayons, I can smudge this out. Now depending on how much movement you want with this color, this is a water reactive pigment. That's what it says right on the barrel of the crayon. So that means if you want a little bit more movement in your color, all you have to do is simply add water. Now, instead of spraying water, I like to go in and work with a baby wipe. And if I just touch my finger on a baby wipe, not only is it gonna clean off the crayon, but watch how that color moves even more. It just kind of slides and glides. So if you wanna get almost that fluid movement like acrylic paint, you can simply go in and just touch a baby wipe to get that color to move a little bit more. Now I'm just gonna keep adding color. Now I'm not worried about uh, my photo or ephemera. You can see I'm just completely covering them up. It's a good thing. We'll fix that a little bit later. Just go in and add colors. Now because this is a sealed surface, remember I can put my colors wherever I want because I'm not worrying about this crayon drying right away. All right, just gonna kinda go in, move some of that color around. Now remember, if you wanna switch colors, you may wanna switch your blending tool, switch your finger a little bit. This way we're not taking that same color and moving it everywhere. All right, so I'm just going to keep blending this out. And we're really getting some great color factors. I love the intensity, kind of the vibrancy when it comes to working with these crayons. I also like that really, I always say I can channel kind of my inner five-year-old self again, just by not putting lids on things and just kind of getting a little messy, but they're really, really fun to work with. It gives you that great kind of artistic ability. So let me share another feature of Distress Crayons. Let me just get this last little section blended. This way I've got a little bit of color everywhere. All right, so at this point, if you have color down and you don't like something, you don't like the way something is looking, we can always go back and add another layer because these, of course, are pigment. So I can still go in, I can add some more yellow right on the top. Maybe I wanna add some in this area. Maybe I wanna blend some up here. Maybe I wanna add a little bit more pink or red to those bottom areas. So you don't have to worry about contaminating your colors when it comes to working with the crayons. That's still going to allow me to go in and just add that additional layer. That yellow sits right on top of the blue. How great is that? So when I'm adding that layer, notice I'm not blending as much because if you blend too much, well, you're gonna mix your colors. So you'll just kind of get a, kind of get a kind of feel for that. I love the playfulness of working with the crayons. All right. Pretty happy with this at this point. I've got my color down. Clearly I've made a mess of my photo and ephemera, but not to worry. These are water reactive, so I can take that baby wipe and I can go in and clean that color right off the top of all of that ephemera. Just kind of remove whatever bits of color. Now once I have that kind of wet, I will go in with a paper towel. I just like to take a piece of it. I don't want to take an entire thing because I really want to go in and just clean up some of those areas, but look how clean that's turning out. All right, we're not finished yet. We're just lifting the color that we put down on the areas that we want to remove it. So far, so good. We've got our color layer down, we've got our ephemera. Now let's add some design, some pattern. All right, so to do that, I'm just going to work with stencils. And I love stencils. I love working with uh, different kinds of stencils, different designs. These are my stencils from Stampers Anonymous, and these are available in the mini size, a lot of different designs. And they're also available in a larger size. So here you can see I've got all these stencils. I like to put mine uh, on a wire ring. But however you store your stencils, whether they're large or small, 
try to collect different scale of stencils. In other words, really big backgrounds and small detail because depending on your project, that's going to really impact the overall appearance of it. So for this, I'm just going to work with a couple of small designs. I'm gonna start with a clean baby wipe. And I have some stencils that I've selected. And what I'm going to do is remember this is reactive with water. So because I have a clean baby wipe, I can take a design. Let's just take this little plus sign. I'm gonna place that down. And just using that baby wipe, I'm gonna wipe right through that stencil. And that is going to remove that color. Look at that, that's so cool. And I can just keep going in and taking different patterns. And I don't have to clean off all the color. I can just go in and just remove some of that or really scrub away some of that layer. And it's really adding that whole impactful kind of layer of imagery. I can turn that on to the side, lift off some stars. And it's really easy because just that moisture is what's going to help lift that crayon. Here we'll go in with that number. You can see the more random, the better. All right, we just kind of continue. I just look down here and see, okay, I'm gonna remove some of that. Now at this point, once you kind of have your overall effect, if you want to create a distressed edge, well, you can still go in and just take that baby wipe and just kind of go around the edge and look how quickly that wears away some of that color. And if you didn't like the way something was turning out, you can start all over by either coloring right over the entire thing, or you could take a baby wipe and clean it all off. Distressed crayons have the most creative versatility you'll ever see. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more from scrapbook.com, please like, share, subscribe, and leave a message. Happy crafting!